ultrasound, uh, embryology, um, you know, have really put pro-choice people on the defensive. Uh, so the new strategy is okay, this is human life, but it really isn't a person. So questions to ask, is it human? That is, did it come from human beings? Is it a genetically unique individual? Is it alive and growing? And I added this in, I was quoting somebody else uh, earlier, and I'm trying to remember if this is Scott Klusendorf or, or who, it seems like the source has been cut out of this, but it, I added, is it not an it at all, but a he or she? Let's, I mean, the gender has been established since, I mean, the gender is built into the DNA. I mean, it's, it's been established since the beginning, since conception, but it's even been able to be visibly confirmed very early in the first trimester. So now these are, I love 3D and 4D, 4D is kind of a, you know, uh, a misnomer, but it just means a, an advanced 3D ultrasound image. And you can just look these up online. Uh, but this is what you can see now. And uh, when I first wrote my book, Pro-Life Answer, Pro Answers to Pro-Choice Arguments, all we had was the, um, what's the, I'm trying to remember the, the term, the type of, intrauterine photography. All there, there was was uh, Leonard Neeson and others had done this intrauterine photography. And it is amazing stuff. But now, uh, for a while, one of the things that's interesting, when 3D ultrasound first came out, uh, some entrepreneurs were doing 3D ultrasounds in malls for pregnant women. So it was like, come on in, and if you're pregnant, we'll give you a picture, and, and not just your gray, black and whitish ultrasound, you know, low res image, We'll give you a high quality image of your preborn child. Guess who some of the most outspoken people were to make that illegal for malls to do that? The abortion lobby. Why did the abortion lobby not want people to be able to, in a mall, get an ultrasound? Why? <laughs> Well, they'll lose money if people change their mind, but also people will see what? I mean, is there anything about that that doesn't look like a baby? How about there? See the thumb sucking? See the smile? See that child? And somebody can say, technically, that's not a smile. That's just the whatever. That... If the, okay, if the child was already born, you'd say it was a smile, but the, clearly, look at that. That child looks delighted. Um, and generally, children in the womb are happy. And uh, I know years ago, um, so many years ago, since my daughter, oldest daughter, just turned 38 and the other's 36, um, you know, we were reading the books and we were playing classical music and we were, you know, and we did sense that, yeah, okay, so obviously, we, we can, can they hear through a pretty thin layer of skin? Well, sure they can. Uh, like you can hear noises when you're underwater. Uh, and so they're hearing this and, they're, and sounds. And so you, people talk to their preborn children. Uh, sucking your big toe, how's that? You know? And look at that tongue, you know, sticking out. I mean, Okay, so folks, this is what we're talking about. And this is where, uh, we, had these images been available in 1973, when Roe v. Wade uh, <clears throat> was put into effect, I think it would have been, it might still have happened, uh, but I think for society as a whole, the level of denial could not have been as great as it has been. And now what people are doing is they're clinging to an old concept that is so obviously even on face, val face value, you know, disproven by looking 
at these children. Look at the twins there on the left. And, and look at this child. I mean, it's just, please. It's, it's almost like, let's move on to the next subject. I mean, are we really talking about whether these are human beings and whether they have a right to live? Yes, we are. Um, look at facial resemblances. Look at, say, the born child has a hand up to the forehead. The unborn child has an. Um, which one of these is a child? 